So no matter what side of the fence you're on when it comes to Star Wars The Last Jedi, this is without a doubt the most polarizing movie in the history of Star Wars. More than the Clone Wars movie, more than the prequels. It has split the fandom. Star Wars The Last Jedi has split the fandom. And lately there's been a lot of trash that I've seen come up about this movie. There have been some articles and some YouTubers who have said some things that have quite frankly pissed me off. So because I am the voice of the voice of the voiceless and there's people out there who are on my side, we're going to stand up for those of you who understand that this is BS. So what am I talking about right now? I'm talking about these people who are claiming that Disney should get rid of the old fans. I'm talking about these articles that say if you hate Star Wars Last Jedi, you hate women and bullshit like that. We're going to discuss why this is not only bad business, but also stupid. Joining me on this video, please welcome a reformed former <laughs> a former Star Wars YouTuber turned entertainer. He still does Star Wars once in a while, though. Please welcome back Dash. Thanks for having me. I feel like former heavyweight champ of the world. <laughs> you were one of the champions, bro. Um, you were, but you, you actually you didn't lose the title. You actually forfeited it after seeing Last Jedi. I'm ready to pick it back up and then hit somebody over the head with a belt at this point. <laughs> hey, let's do it. So um, the thing about this movie, we're not going to review the movie too much on here. We're not going to talk about that, but I want to talk about some of the backlash going on. Now, uh, I've said this before, okay? Not everybody who likes this movie is a liberal, you know, snowflake, and not everybody who hates this movie is a fat basement dwelling virgin. And I really can't stand the articles I've been seeing in the last couple of weeks. There have been some people who I actually have some respect for saying some dumb things about Star Wars, uh, and it really is pissing me off. Okay, look, it doesn't matter if you like this movie or hate this movie. Number one, you should be respectful towards one another. But on this video, we're not going to be that respectful because I feel like some of the stupidity out there needs to be addressed. Case in point, this article that came out about how... Uh, dude, what the hell's going on here? So this whole idea that... Fans who hate Last Jedi are a certain certain kind of fan. Like, oh, okay, they don't like women. They don't like change. They 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 didn't accept Skywalker. They didn't accept this and that. I'm just so tired of it. How about we actually address the fact that there are problems in this movie? How about we get our little tinfoil freaking I want to blow Bob Iger's cock hats off and let's actually discuss that this movie has issues. Like, why is it that... When people people don't like this movie, the ones who do like it have to not defend the movie but insult them. I think that you've hit the nail on the head with the fact that there's a lot of divisive rhetoric going on because it's it's actually pretty smart to instead of actually address the issues, they take the zero point zero 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 one percent of people. Let's say it one dude says, I hate Ray because she's a woman, right? They hear that and they go, there it is. That's why all these people don't hate it. And so they say, you hate women, and that's why you hate The Last Jedi. And so this label then cocoons them and shields them from the logic of, no, there's a lot of flaws in the character writing, and, and it seems like maybe they've, you know, sandwiched women or minorities into places to fill a quota, and they haven't, like, we're on the side of put women in but give them better roles and uh so it's kind of smart on the fans end to to kind of you know throw in this whole uh use that as is the rhetoric or even the, the filmmakers let's imagine that disney just said you know what this is going to piss people off but they're going to be so busy arguing about this that they're going to forget you know the greater argument of is the film good or bad because you know this this is how you win fights on the internet right you just label people and, and watch watch everybody you know stand back and watch them scream I hate it so much, bro, because the idea that they that these people and I don't I, again I'm not gonna sit here and play tin foil either and say that they're all paid off by Disney. Cause I don't think they are, but some of them are just straight up stupid. Look, if you're out there and you actually believe that every person who hates the Last Jedi hates it because they hate women or they hate this and that, you're not a very intelligent person, bro. In fact, I think you're fucking brain dead. And I'm not even gonna I'm not even fucking around anymore with this shit, bro. I, I think you're brain dead because. Like, you're right, they generalize an entire audience that has genuine criticisms, and when you read the Rotten Tomatoes reviews, some of them are dumb, some of them are, like, kind of lowbrow, and, man, you know what, the, the. yeah, there are some that aren't very intelligent, but there's a lot of very intelligent writers on there, and I'm talking about the audience reviews, that wrote some very great points that I think people need to read, like, people need to understand this, too, not to mention that, uh, and I talked about this before, you know, even if you 
don't hate the movie, and even if you like it or whatever your opinion is, you have to understand that Luke Skywalker is a beloved character that's existed for 40 years. So when you start doing a deconstruction of Luke Skywalker or when you start changing the powers of the Force, it's going to irritate a certain number of people, and that's just something that's going to happen, dude. It's just something that's going to happen. Like, if you go see Avengers and they kill off Tony Stark... It might be better for the narrative, but it also might piss people off because that's been kind of the main guy. So it's just one of those things where they had to have expected it. But what's irritating me is people who say things like Star Wars should get rid of the old fans. I got to talk about this with you, bro, because that has to be one of the stupidest things. Now, I know that you and I talked about this in our Is Disney Ruining Star Wars video about how you believe that that's what they're trying to do. But what, what my whole mentality is why would you alienate fans that have supported this franchise from the beginning, lived through the prequels, lived through the Clone Wars, lived through Rebels, lived through all this crap, and yet, you know, want to bring in new fans. Like, I get it. You want to sell new toys and bring in new fans? I get that, right? I totally get it. But why does it have to be at the expense of the ones that have been there from the beginning, that spend the most money, that buy all the books, that buy all the comics, the hardcore nerds? You should be embracing them because they're the ones who are giving you their hard-earned money. Because they're smart, they grew up, they they can articulate critique much easier. Let's say that you've got an eight year window for an eight year old to go watch Star Wars, buy the most toys, be the most profitable and see it with his parents, which it's a family event. So the family only comes for the, th the movies, which is one every year, but the kids buy the toys throughout the movie. Clearly you want to cycle out the kids. So losing the older ones, when they start critiquing it, going, there's a plot hole here, here, here. That that totally works. And um, just to speak to another point, and that that's my personal belief, but the other point is um, people didn't just critique women. Like, everybody puts their fingers in their ears and say that. People pr critique Luke's writing the heaviest. And some of the most beloved characters in Star Wars are women in the expanded universe. I'm talking Kraya, Ventress, Ahsoka Tano, who was rode into the Clone Wars, a kid show, is beloved by the whole fandom. So f to, to have that narrow argument of people hate women when the most hardcore fans loved women and they were some of the best characters and nobody complained. Nobody said, you know, get rid of Ventress or Otano. They were beloved. It's just disturbing to me that people think that, well, they, they, they're trying to buy each other. It's only on the side of, you know, spouting this crap that they, they buy it. Cause clearly they know deep down, you know what? People haven't hated women in Star Wars till till this point or the characters till this point or Luke Skywalker to this point, maybe it is the writing and nothing to do with gender, but they just can't fathom or swallow that, that pill, you know? Well, what's been interesting dash, cause the last time we got together, it was shortly after the movie came out. Now it's a month later and it's been very interesting to watch Disney's disaster recovery tactics during this. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy hasn't said a fucking thing. Ryan Johnson has gone on the defensive. Now, I understand Ryan Johnson defending his film, and he should defend his film because it's his film. I actually respect him for that. But at the same time, he's doing this kind of passive-aggressive tactic where he's been like, you know what? I mean, this is, this is what I wanted to do. You know, he's like, for example, on Twitter, he showed a picture of that Force book, and oh, look, you know, Force, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the actual projections of real power. And, and that's fine. Like, I respect that about him. I do. But he's also been doing it in a very kind of like wink, wink, like, oh, like, look what I'm doing kind of way. And he's also been kind of saying, okay, well, JJ can change this if he wants to. Like, it's almost like he's kind of telling those fans, hey, I know you didn't like my movie, but that's okay because it can be saved by JJ. And it's just, it's very weird when you see things like that. And, and now you're seeing like reviewers pop up, like giving it five stars and then like dropping one, one sentence saying, oh, great movie. And, and I just, it's just weird to me. Like, I feel like these tactics are becoming more and more obvious. Uh, with them playing, you know, and then the whole thing with China. What do you think about the China thing, bro, about how the movie flopped in China, even though they had Rose Tico, who's Asian, all over this marketing? What happened there? Chinese are super smart, dude. This has been a storied thing in uh, history because obviously movies have realized they cannot be profitable unless you go to the global market. So a couple of things. One, when Iron Man 3 was filmed, you can actually look this up, they dropped the Mandarin character as a Chinese guy because they thought it'd be a stereotype. However, they gave... Uh, in deleted scenes, Tony Stark, this Chinese doctor that got cut out for us, but they added the scenes in for him, you know, and it was kind of this relationship, this back and forth banter. And the Chinese were like, 
We're not idiots. This is stupid. Pandering. You, you, pandering. You're pandering. You're so pandering. Like, Screw that. And, and, and they're doing it with us, with the women, the minorities. It's like it's well, obvious, dude. But so this is the. But you're technically not meant to say it in this culture. That's where they they win. But right. Um, so then what happens is Donnie Yen, who played Chu in Wei, you can look at his yeah. quotes. He was like, I just didn't want to be some stereotypical Chinese monk, you know, stereotype. I read the script and that's what I was. I got them to change a lot of things. He did cool stuff like like made sure it blind, etc. But again, he said, I'm scared. I don't want to roll just to panda. And the script was bullshit, but he made it work. And the character was amazing for it. So China is very smart and, and they are proud in the fact that they're just like, we know what you're doing, America. Stop playing this BS. We're smarter than that. And so I think that because they're not playing with our politics and they are very articulate about what they want and what they do not. They saw the movie and have gone, we see it for what it is and it wasn't good. Goodbye. And I'm, I'm like, that seems to be a greater indicator of, of, you know, the, the true, I guess, status of the film versus what people are so desperately trying to do. And again, I will say this openly. If you like the film, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your your bag, I'm not going to put you down. It's not not the worst movie. It's not the worst movie ever made at all. Nowhere close to being that bad. It's just a new direction. It has nothing to do with Snoke theories that didn't come through. It just didn't feel like a Star Wars. It didn't have the epic space opera and and the character writing was weak to me. And it just, it was clunky. And it's not like I wanted them to retread old ground, you know, like The Force Awakens. I just wanted something that was really good. And to me, that film was not, and a lot of people agree with me, you know? Yeah, we've talked about it. I just don't like this idea of, and it was bad when the movie first came out, but I feel like now it's becoming more public. Like, oh, if you if you dislike this movie, this is why. Like, don't tell people why they dislike it. Listen to what they have to say and, 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 and respect their points. You know what I mean? Just, you don't have to agree. We can have a civil conversation. I've had them before. But respect what they're saying, dude. Like, because they're, they're making points. It's just been, this has been something unexpected, bro. Like... If you would have told me this a month and a half ago, I would have called you a straight liar that we'd be living in a world where I, there was a Star I Wars couldn't, movie. Could not right? fathom it. Do it. Could not fathom. Look, and and just to touch on this, I'm not going to name and shame because it, it's so prevalent in the community. There's a line drawn in the sand. There's people who aren't really fans and the the fans, but the fans of that have realized, hey, there's a small cluster of us that love this movie. Disney notices because the community loves us and will support you no matter what, have stuck their chin out and are actively trying to piss off the other people by saying, you know what? It's our fault that Star Wars landed short because we had too many expectations. I'm like, I cannot believe you just said that. Or our fan theory suck. Or, you know, we want well, Star Wars to be something. And I'm like, are you... Yeah. Are you mental? I like I, I can't I, believe I, you're I, saying that. I hate I dis I cannot stand legit cannot stand when somebody says, Oh well, if you watch the movie without expectations, how the fuck can you watch the eighth chapter of a beloved, maybe the most beloved film franchise in the history of cinema? Because I still think Star Wars has so much equity that even though the MCU and there's other found franchises that are big, you know, Nothing is Star Wars. The equity that Star Wars has with 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 people from forty years is un unmatched. How the fuck can you say I went to go see Episode Eight with no expectations when the fucking name of the movie is Star Wars? Get the fuck out of here with that shit, bro. You can't. You can't. How can you? Unless you're a new fan, like a new, 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 new fan, you cannot tell me. That you went into that movie not expecting it to be good. Because I was expecting us all to kind of talk about how great it was. Because like we talked about, bro, I like Ryan Johnson. I like, you know, his other movies. I like Looper, The Brothers Bloom. He's got a good collection of movies. He's a good visionary filmmaker. And there is some good visionary filmmaking in the movie. But it it didn't work out for me, right? But that's not what I wanted. I I wanted to like this movie. I I went into that movie theater, like, because, dude... A lot of my friends, a lot of our friends, the reviewers, the uh, the critics, even my own, like, like other people, had, oh, man, you're going to love the movie. Somebody told me, you're going to love the movie. And then, and then after I saw the movie, I was like, you really don't know me. You really don't know me because if you knew me, you would have known I wasn't going to like that movie, bro. You know, if you would have known. But again, this is the strangest Star Wars film we've ever dealt with, man. This just, is strange. This is weird. I... I uh... I'm happy for people who liked it because at least the bittersweet thing is at least they've got a fan to go back to. The thing that really just irks me is that other 
fans and YouTubers and creators and websites can can stick their tongue out and go, you pieces of shit, look at you, you're a hater. And, and I hate we're, that. We're, well, we're on, we're on the other side. Like, Star Wars like, was our life. Do you think we want to hate it? I would do anything to to watch that movie and to be like, that was the greatest thing ever and be happy. It broke my you. heart. It broke my heart. I'm heartbroken. I'm not happy. I'm heartbroken. Why would you think that this makes me like, like I'm not a negative person. I don't dance around being like, fuck you, Star Wars. It was my life and my passion and my love and it and it hurts. So what? like, why do you insult to injury have gone? It's your fault. Like they feel like the, the need to attack to like, to be defensive. And that makes me think, wait, do you actually like it? Or are you just pandering because you want Disney's approval because there's so few people who loved it? And, you know, Disney is going to be like looking around when the dust clears and they're like, well, we better take it uh, notice of some YouTubers. Oh, we've got some prime examples of people who still love our stuff. We're going to go with them versus the negative idiots who clearly don't know what filmmaking is. You know, like I can see Disney's logic or the logic of people on that side, but you don't have to take down your peers or your friends or, or be so uh, acerbic, you know? And, 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 I mean, it's just, it's it crazy. It just pisses me off, bro, when they say shit like that. Like, you know, Disney should find new fans. Like, like, you know what, what really irritates me, bro, is the hypocrisy, okay? How can somebody who is an old fan, in some cases older than you and me, as far as age goes and whatnot, how can somebody who is an older fan of Star Wars actually have the audacity to say, oh, well, Star Wars needs new fans and then dump the old fans. Like, if you've actually gone out and said Star Wars has to dump the old fans, I think you're an idiot. I really do. I mean, I, maybe not you're an idiot, but I think that's an idiotic statement. I mean, no, Star Wars should embrace all fans. And, yes, if this movie, because this movie, look, no matter what anybody tells you, people hate this movie. If you want to sit there with your eyes closed and your ears covered under a, a rock, you know, great. But the reality is, in the real world, a lot of people hate this movie, and a lot of people love this movie, and that's fine. Disney needs to really figure this out and understand that people who hate this movie are not dumb. They're not lacking intellect. They're not, they didn't understand the movie. There are plenty of reasons not to like it, which to me, Dash, man, puts an incredible amount of pressure on J.J. Abrams because now it's different. See, when he did Force Awakens, there were very low expectations because of the prequels and because he was coming back. He had certain things that Ryan Johnson did not have and that he's not going to have in Episode Nine. He had the original cast. Carrie Fisher passed away. He had. We can't have her in Episode Nine. Han Solo, uh, Harrison Ford. See, when you when he's making Force Awakens, he's got these things right that he can use to reel in the Star Wars fans, make them feel good about themselves. You know, oh, we're doing practical effects. All these things that are like separate from the prequels. But now, coming into Episode 9, this is a very different situation for Abrams, Dash, bro. Because now, he's dealing with a split fan base. Some of them are looking forward to seeing what you do with what Ryan Johnson did and follow that story up. And other ones are saying, how are you going to fix what Ryan Johnson did? So, this guy, JJ's got to do both at once. And this is this is a, a, a high-pressure situation for this dude, Dash, man. I, I do not envy him right now. Look, I agree with you you know that i'm not a fan of the character of ray from the force awakens i thought that that was the worst thing that abrams did in the whole movie other than you know shitting on phasma because i like phasma but um it was just so i mean i already felt like he had pitfalls but he really i i admire him a lot more because i realized that he picked up a series and took the first shot which is the hardest one ryan screwed it up a little bit more where you go with that I'm not I'm not exactly sure to be honest. No, it's hard. Like if we're sitting down here and we're trying to figure out what to do with episode nine, Ryan hit the reset button. So it's gonna be tough. I mean, again, he has to make a movie that's gonna satisfy the old fans and the new fans, and I don't think it's gonna be a redo of Return of the Jedi. I don't I don't see that happening. He's gonna do something. He can't, oh, can't there'll be, be there'll be Ewoks, dude. There will be a Pog Ewok. I tr I'll put a million Bitcoin <laughs> before it bursts Whoa. on the fact that there is there is a hundred percent going to be some shitty, stupid animal that is going to be in the end of that movie. You know it, you know it in the bottom of your heart that they have to sell, um, Star Wars, which brings me to the next point. I think yeah. that, I think that our want it being geeks, I, I think that we ruined Star Wars in a way. Um, and it's not our expectation. It's, people... Oh, are you going down the map pat route now, bro? <laughs> what is this? All right. Where's this going? Every one of my videos, um, you know, since I started, 
all I ever wanted was everybody to experience Star Wars the way that we did. And the stories in the expanded universe, the video games, I wanted the masses to experience it because I felt that they were so rich that you were just looking at a small amount of content. But what I didn't realize was obviously Disney just didn't have a plan. They still don't. They just let each director. No, ride. that's a huge problem. But huge problem there. They also were tasked. They also did another thing that that Lucas never did. Lucas had a very defined. I'm making stories for a target audience about you know a space opera that deals with family drama, etc. Disney has made Star Wars for everyone, which is what I, I wanted everyone to experience it. But when you make a film or a series for everyone, you make it for no one. There is no target audience, you know? And that's why it's so wishy-washy. And and you, if you try and please everybody, you please nobody. And I feel like them going global has diluted what Star Wars is so much that it's kind of just like... Well, yeah. and Disney, too. And Disney. Oh, yeah. 100%. Well, I mean, yeah. And No, I agree. I think with Star Wars, it's got to be... The people forget, bro. Star Wars are actually not complicated movies. I think they try to overcomplicate them. It's good versus evil. It doesn't matter what ethnicity or alien species they are. It's good versus evil. You have white people on the good side, white people on the bad side. You have aliens on the good side, aliens on the bad side. Not anymore. That's just... White guys are on the bad side now, exclusively. Only white males. <laughs> Except for Luke Skywalker, right? Right, and right. Han, but so he's, he's, the they're dead. Characters. Funny enough, they're dead. Yeah, they're let's, dead. Let's see episode nine and see if there's any good white guys that are not uh, foaming at the mouth idiots. I mean, I don't think that uh, Oscar Isaac counts as a white guy, but he was already he was no, a he's, dude. He's Bro, he was a dude, bro, right? Like he, he was he was still a male, therefore he was like foaming at the mouth. He's like, I'm not gonna listen to you, Captain. I'm gonna do whatever the shit I want. <laughs> Even though my character was nothing like this in The Force Awakens. Cowboy. Yeah, I, I agree. I hated that too. Um, but it's just it's interesting to me, man, because yeah, it's like they, they had they went through that checklist of things they had to do and they forgot that this story is supposed to be good versus evil. It, it's very, very simple. Um, but like I said, we're not going to review that on here. It's just more so like this is more of a response to the community and of people just being douchebags. And this, and what sucks is that some of these people that I'm talking about are in a position of power, you know, and I'm not knocking them at all. Like in a, in a, I'm not saying that they're horrible people, but I think if you actually, again, if you actually have the audacity to say Star Wars needs to forget the old fans and Star Wars needs to ignore them and Star Wars needs to do this and that. You're going to end up... You, you just sound like an idiot. I mean, I'm sorry. You sound like an idiot. You, you, Star Wars needs to respect everyone, right? In, a, in the sense of being more understanding of the criticisms and making good movies. That's all that matters. I just want good movies, bro. And there are some people that don't don't like any of these. Like I've talked to fans who don't like Rogue One, don't like Force Awakens, don't like Last Jedi. They're gone. I mean, they might come back for nine because it's freaking Star Wars. We've heard bad things about Han Solo. Nothing. We've heard nothing good about Han Solo, dude. I haven't seen a single person say anything good about Han Solo, which is might be another tactic. They might be trying to lower our expectations, and then it's actually a pretty good movie, and then we're all like, hey, it wasn't so bad. That could be the case. Who knows? Dude. But... Um, um, did you see we'll the? See. Did you see the two things? First, did you see the deleted scenes of The Force Awakens where Han Solo, old Han, Harrison Ford, the Han Solo, the only goddamn Han Solo with Lando Calrissian, the only guy. I want Billy D. Williams. Sorry, Lando's my favorite character uh, in the original trilogy. Uh, he kisses the dice. You know the die that we see in um, freaking. Yes. And he puts him in the the cockpit of the Falcon before he flies it. Yes. They took it out of the movie. That's so pivotal for people that go back to the new the Han Solo uh, standalone. And are like, oh, that's why the die was so big in the Last Jedi. If they had him kiss it in the Force Awakens, it would make so much more sense to people. I cannot believe yeah, they well, took JJ, that out. Well, that's that's because probably JJ um, didn't think they were going to make it a big story point. Maybe because it looks like why, he was kissing why is nuts. That? You know, he's just maybe. he's kissing balls. He was like, maybe, uh, old old boy, maybe you shouldn't kiss them. Stop licking them. Put him down, Harrison. And he's like, I'll be done in a minute. Um, this the second thing is fuck, <laughs> fuck people who, um, because you say I'm gonna be disrespectful. People who say you shouldn't be a fan, um, because you know we need new fans or whatever. Wash out the old blood. Like screw them. I'll openly say it. Any YouTuber, fuck any them. fan. Yeah, screw like. You, if you want to be uh, segregated and, and be exclusionary, that's the whole, like, you're missing the point of Star Wars, and that's that's your whole argument in the first place. That's so hypocritical, because they're like, well, you don't like Star Wars because you don't like women, but 
anybody over this age needs to get out and stuff. And we're like, we don't, we don't mind women in Star Wars. Why are you telling people, you know, excluding certain amounts of people? And, and even though you'd be excluding yourself, if you're a 45 year old man, who's like, it's for the kids, get out of here. I'm like, are you a child? Because what you're saying is, yeah, like, you're, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> you're, you're, you're saying exclude yourself. Yeah. You stupid idiot. Yeah. The rest oh, well, I'm, I'm a film head. critic. So I'm, I'm a film critic. So I'm allowed to go see it. Fuck you, bro. <laughs> fuck that. Fuck that. That was actually a pretty good impression, bro. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. Should That's a pretty good impression, pretty good. bro. I'm pretty good at it. But you see what I'm saying? Like, like I, I honestly, dude, real talk. This is how I feel. If you actually have the audacity to segregate the fandom or say shit like that, dude, you shouldn't even be getting press passes, bro. You shouldn't even be a member of the press. You should be a shitty vlogger or a blogger who has, like, 30 hits on his on his freaking shitty fucking live journal, dude. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a throwback. Because, like, dude... Like, that's just the most idiotic thing, especially if you are one of the older fans. Like, get get out of here. But anyways, uh, what else do you want to say before, before we get out of here? This was a fun time. Uh, I want to talk about um, Star Wars, The Last Jedi cast dunks on sexist fan edit that cut out women just for two seconds. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't see that, but I heard about you know, it. No, I didn't. I, who's watched that? That's so crazy. So, a dude, this this is fuel to the fire. But it look for comedy's sake, I'm not agreeing with it, but objectively, it's hilarious. So everybody gets annoyed, and everybody's like, "You just hate Star Wars because of women." So some guy sat there and gone, "You know what? You're right." And he he made an edit of the film and just cut out all the women. And so that just imagine the frenzy of people. The cast actually like commented on that and were like you know like but that just spurs them on so i think but that that guy does not represent all the fans either that's just him no, being a goofball no, me, he's just me, joking around no no i think that it's like when they serious. cut jar jar out of episode remember star wars episode one the phantom edit with no jar jar it's just a joke you know that's all it is no, but even if he was serious who cares it's one it's one nut job and you know what i did i like uh holdo's character or rose's no, am I gonna? Oh, oh, you and I are both gonna die on the sword saying we love Leia. I don't even care if she Mary Poppins back, even though it made no sense. Like, yes, absolutely. I love Leia. Yeah, we we yeah. love Leia a little bit too much, even old Leia. I mean, give me some of that. <laughs> you, um, um, that's more like my. I'm not cutting that out. I'm not cutting God that out. Damn it. You know. No, I'm I, well, then I'm gonna out. put this in. I said that joke because Danny is always talking about how hot Carrie Fisher is in her older age, and it's hilarious. Oh, I'm cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Fisher, Carrie Fisher was kissing fans at like Celebration 2015. Deep bro. She, you, you know what though? Real talk. Carrie Fisher would appreciate that. I feel. I, I don't know her, but based on her interviews, I think she would appreciate. Yeah. It. No, she had a, a fantastic sense of humor, and that's what people are losing. They're losing perspective. They see what is these little pockets of what's acceptable, no matter how heinous, like just casting, uh, like labeling people as sexist, you can say that. So you write an article being like, all of you are sexist if you don't like this thing. That's kosher. But you know, on the other side- and it's also clickbait. It's, also it's clickbait. clickbait, but it's also socially acceptable. It's kind of the in thing to be like, you know, men are dicks. So people write that, it's totally fine. And then people who want to see, you know, be in the, the bully pulpit of popularity go, well, this isn't really factual, but it's popular, so I'm gonna stand on that side and go yeah you're sexist yeah it's your fan theories that make you hate it and like because it's it's socially acceptable they do it and i'm like you've you've lost your mind like this is not how you treat each other you know that it's 0.00001 percent of fans that are actually sexist or racist or, you know, or horrible but that's just you know what it reminds people. me of what's that dash you know what it reminds me of this is not the first time we've seen this ghostbusters 2016 now i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go into a whole thing with this right but when Ghostbusters 2016 came out, Sony tried to push this narrative that the only reason why that trailer got so many dislikes is because men were sexist. To the point where it was reported that they were actively deleting any single criticism of the actual trailer not being funny or not being humorous or being uninteresting and leaving up all the comments about men shitting on the movie sexist men which there weren't even that many of them point zero 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 one percent like you said and then it came out recently from paul Feig that he even admitted that he regrets that whole thing like this this was something that people need to understand this is not a conspiracy theory okay companies 
these film studio companies are shady sometimes, and they will do things like this. They wanted to push the narrative of the movie's not terrible unless you're a sexist male, and they actually actively did things like this. It was reported. It was talked about. This has been talked about. There were leaked emails. All this stuff is not a conspiracy. It's fact. They were, and they have, they were provocative on purpose, though, dude. You saw on set that they had all the women, basically a whole, whole female uh, cast and production crew, and they had to sign girl power, which imagine if, like, dudes got to together and yes it wouldn't yes. it wouldn't be socially acceptable you'd be like what the fuck but um i knew comedically that it would be fucked because of they went up against some greats and uh i forget the you know i forget her name the australian lass that's bigger that she's a comedian um she's in those uh pitch perfect movies whatever she was amazing but when she dropped out because i was looking forward to her in the film i thought she can carry it because i'm my aussie love when she dropped out i went this film's in trouble but that was that was when I knew that the mania had taken over was when and I and I wish I could go back in time and tell everybody don't say the word woman once because what happened was as soon as people said women, they all hid and they had that cocoon of you hate this film because of women and we're like, No, it's horrible comedy and it's it's just women who appear to be in it but they took that 0.001% of people who made uh, sexist comments they blew them up and then it was never a discussion about is this movie good or bad it was a uh, sexist people hating on it and that's why it's you know it's getting hate not the the quality uh, of of the film itself and so i feel like i wish people would never say the word sex but it's a tool for companies to exploit they are actively they know what they're doing they're being as provocative as possible and the, then the, the people who work for these companies are very smart oh they are hugely so and, and so it's a it's a great argument but it's socially acceptable to to say that and to fight people openly and and to like really you know drag them through the mud so they're just kind of protected and they've got like a whole army of people just waiting for for one dude to be like you know what these women suck and it's like oh that's how you you know you said it instead of these comedians and then it's on um so yeah i think yeah it, it didn't it wasn't the movie wasn't funny and it really wasn't that funny and the movie actually when you watch it was very offensive towards men the movie is sexist against men and and that Can was you the be most sexist ironic against thing men? danny is that a real thing yes I don't, it is a real I thing. I mean, you and I know it's a real thing, but in, in you know, some people's eyes that you can't be sexist towards men, you know, so that's... Well, those people are dumb, bro, but... and naive, and they want to push an agenda. No, the movie was very insulting towards men, in my opinion. I didn't review it. I saw it later. I didn't I didn't care for it. Um, but, I mean, there was some stuff I did like. Like, you know, the, the actresses in the movie do have talent, and there were some funny yeah, a lot scenes. Of talent. I didn't hate the movie. Yeah, they're very talented. I, Individually, I really feel that way. it was a bad writing, it was a bad project, and they it was bad marketing, and they got what you know a lot more heat than they needed. I saw some of the the shit people said, which was really ugly. I will admit that. And if it bombed and it was men, would people care? I mean, did people care about like the younger Dumb and Dumber or whatever? Probably not. But you know, like you, like I said, it's it's a sign of the times, and it's unfortunate because if we if everybody just said it was a bad comedy. Maybe they would have learned a lesson, but it's it it saddens me that the last thing that I want in 2018 is to talk politics, and yet it somehow permeates through everything. It's Even in movies, it, it, it's now. it's yeah. entrenched, and they use it as a weapon. So that you're so busy having this argument, because they know how divisive it is, that we should all be together and be like, wait a second, you. Oh, I nearly said the C word on your podcast. You sons of bitches of companies. You say whatever you want, we, bro. We, all right. You cunt companies. We know what you're doing. You're dividing us on purpose because it's it's horrible. I hate that feeling. And by the way, I just want to say the word cunt in Australia is like a regular yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't so. <laughs> It doesn't mean as much. Now, I'm, I'm on Australian soil. If I was in America, I promise you, I probably wouldn't say it because I have to curb that. But um, and, and, and it's really – it's upsetting. I've lost – have I like – unfollowed a bunch of people just because i don't want to see them go political you know it have i had people i've lost or you know unfollow me on social media yeah obviously they're not your friends in the first place but i've had people you know go out of my life i should say uh just because of the fact that politics like a political view the the i you're your identity, people aren't objective. If, if somebody said to me, I'm a liberal or a Republican, well, number one, I'm Australian. But number two, even if I, if <laughs> I sway it each way, I, either way, I'd be like, okay, I don't agree with, with you, but objectively, I see your points are why or, you know, whatever. But people are, are like, oh, here's the line in the sand. You're on the other side. They do the Eminem rap uh, freestyle thing where they're just like, you know, fuck you. And you're like we were really good friends and it's just politics and it's going to shift. And in 10 years, people are probably going to look back on this and be like, why were we so ugly to each other? 
You know what I mean? I, it just baffles me, dude. It's really sad. I, I hope so. It could get worse, too. I, I don't think it, it could. Get it's worse. fever pitch right now. These things cycle. You know, it's like the 70s with hippies screaming, being like, boo on you, man. Boo. They fuck the government. And then the 80s went super hardcore. Um, corporate. They loved materialistic things. You know, like it, it, everything is a cycle in the world. Everything. So I'm just looking forward for, to a cycling out so people don't treat each other like shit over something so trivial. You know what I mean? Well, it's not trivial, but you know what I mean. In your day-to-day -day life, do you have to... No, it's just it's more so annoying than anything. Well, it's you know? more... I mean, like... That, that's the like way I see people, it. You should value people and individuals and your relationships over uh, the meta, you know, message that, that people are, like... Uh, the, the extreme left and the extreme right, there's not much difference between the two, to be honest. Um I mean, let, this this is a totally off topic at this point, bro. We're talking. About, what happened to Star Wars? That, but that's what I'm saying. No, but the that's metaphor. No, I know the the. I know the metaphor you're saying is that Star Wars fans have kind of been split like this now, and it shouldn't be this way. It no, really shouldn't no. Be. What my no my metaphor was that you know it used to be the Empire uh, was the dark and you know Republic, and the the light was the uh, Democrats. That that's how George Lucas wrote it, just like low key, right? And now I've realized. Uh, over time that everybody who hates Star Wars is a Sith and I've become a Sith. That's that's where I'm going with it. <laughs> I'm Sith. Yeah, I guess I agree there. I'm, jo I'm Let joking. us know your joking. thoughts. Uh, no, 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 I know you are. Uh, but I still agree. Let us know your thoughts in the comments about uh, what we've talked about. There's a lot, there's a lot to discuss here. Uh, Star Wars is split in the fandom. All I have to say to close out is it, it, please stop being a douche to people. If you like the movie, if you dislike the movie... Just stop. Listen to what they have to say. Agree to disagree. And that's it. And that's it. Let's just enjoy this thing. And if you don't enjoy Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi, you've at least got other movies. You've always got the original trilogy. We're always going to go back to it. You've got so many books to go check out. I'm just saying, don't be a douche to the people who like the movie. And if you like the movie, stop being an idiot and saying that the old fans should go away. Like, no, we should all stick around. Like... I'm going to go see episode 9. I'm not invested. I am not invested at all in the EU or the canon, excuse me, anymore because they fucked it up. But I am still going to go see episode 9 because of morbid curiosity and because, you know what, bro, it's freaking Star Wars. We've heard bad things about Han Solo, but I'm still going to go see that movie too, honestly. I'm not going to lie about that. I wish Billy D. Williams so, is back. Me too, bro. This movie should have taken place right before Force Awakens. It had Harrison Ford and Billy D. Williams in it, bro. What's that in a heartbeat? That would have been they, great. Why of all the all the characters, the the like the number one actor in the world, the sexiest man in the world, the guy who just knocks it out of the park every time? Why would you make somebody have to go up against him? I mean, don't they should have done Sebastian Stan or Shaw, whatever his name, no, Stan. Um, the the guy you know out of the MCU who plays Winter Soldier to do a young Luke Skywalker yeah. over a, like at, at the Jedi Academy you know when Ben Solo turned like a million times over doing Harrison you can't touch Harrison like I'm so scared for that movie dude I, I mean Star Wars already broke my heart but I'm like holy shit Disney you are playing with some fire we will have more to discuss as we approach the film thank you for being here bro thank you for having me we'll talk to y'all later.